enormously rapid change. Technologically, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, 5G, Zoom, um, all of it moving very, very rapidly. Uh, but thank goodness there's also uh, new developments, you know, in how to more efficiently use the spectrum which we have uh, and to improve upon our competitiveness. Um, Mr. Lewis, uh, would you take that question and just explain how uh, this, uh, this recent technological changes are making uh, more spectrum available uh, for our use? Sure, Senator. And it's not just more, it's more efficient use of, of spectrum. Uh, you know, we have a market now that looks very different, a spectrum market that looks very different than it did uh, a couple decades ago or even a decade ago. Uh, we have uh, uh, updated finer tuned instruments. Uh, you know, many of the, the uh, many of the fights we've seen between agencies that have been referenced by senators, uh, you know, could be solved with early planning and early engagement, like Mr. Van An has, has said, uh, but also uh, making sure that we're looking at certain standards uh, for the equipment that's used. Um, and, and this needs to be done on a collaborative basis. We need all stakeholders at the table and it needs to be done early. And I think this is why uh, looking to a longer term uh, auction authority uh, can send the signal from Congress that uh, that is needed and that uh, we want to avoid those types of problems in the future. Um, yeah, and, and unlicensed um, users um, are also important using the spectrum. You know, they're disruptors. Uh, they're change uh, agents, they're experimenters, and we have to make sure uh, that we uh, carve out the space for them uh, in this um, spectrum world that, uh, uh, that we live in. Uh, I'd like to talk as well, if I could, about spectrum auctions, which do raise significant amount of uh, money, uh, less than in the past, but still a ton of revenues are made available. And just look over at a real need. <clears throat> you know, during the uh, pandemic, we saw that there were 12 to 17 million children who did not have the internet at home. And we were able, and I led the effort to put in $7 billion to, for an emergency connectivity fund uh, so that kids at home could have it. Uh, now, uh, that funding is starting to run out. So could you look at this issue for us, please, Mr. Lewis, and talk about whether or not some of these revenues should be dedicated to ensuring that we have a permanent uh, emergency connectivity fund uh, so that no child, especially black, brown, immigrant children in our country are left behind. Sure, and thank you for championing the Emergency Con Connectivity Fund, Senator. Uh, I, I served on my local school board for two terms and, and we lived uh, that experience uh, with students who were not connected in the home and, and, and the homework gap is real with the disadvantages that they had with their peers. Um, I think there's a number of sources of funding that could be used to continue the, the ECF. Um, I, we've talked about the Airways for Equity idea where uh, auction revenue can be used and set aside for uh, digital equity funds that can include some of the uh, educational needs uh, from the ECF. Um, of course, Congress can always, uh, because auctions don't come in a regular schedule. Uh, Congress could always appropriate more money uh, to continue on that work, but, but certainly it's a, a critical part of making sure that everyone is connected and sees the benefits of, of high-speed quality connectivity. Yeah, we're gonna have kids, you know, 20 years from now, looking back at their childhood saying, and they just left me behind. I wasn't, you know, connected and, and that it harmed them. So I just think, with the revenues that are raised, we just have to ensure that we focus on ensuring that everyone gets access to it. And that's what the Emergency Connectivity Fund is. And I just think that that, that, uh, that fund should get a part of any revenues. And finally, on net neutrality, everyone wants competition. They want, you know, they want to make sure that there's a Darwinian paranoia inducing, you know, competition environment. Uh, and that's what net, no, net neutrality is all about as well, Mr. Lewis. Uh, I introduced legislation uh, a couple of days ago with Senator Wyden, and we have a couple of dozen of our colleagues who have signed on. Talk about how important net neutrality is to ensuring that we have uh, a marketplace, you know, that allows every voice to be heard, every competitor to be able to compete. 
Yes, Senator, uh, net neutrality is important to prevent uh, harmful discrimination by uh, the, the broadband providers that serve as gatekeepers to the internet. And, um, uh, you know, for years now, uh, we've had uh, uh, broadband providers uh, committing to adhere to those principles, uh, but we still have a number of examples over the years, uh, while we have not had clear net neutrality rules, strong net neutrality rules, uh, that should be looked at, that should, should be investigated by uh, an expert agency like the FCC. And unfortunately, they don't, have, they don't have the authority to do so right now. So restoring those rules and that authority, I think, is essential. I, I agree with you. I think net neutrality, it just means non-discrimination. That's just another way of saying it. And we just can't allow discrimination uh, on the net. And uh, that's the goal of net neutrality. And I'm going to continue with Senator Wyden and so many more of my colleagues in order to press for that to become the policy in our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for the uh, opportunity to be with you.